It's red. I think I'm good to go. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. This is exciting. I've got some jitters, but it's great to see you guys. Um, I'm excited to talk through kind of getting your team on the same web page. Uh, so dr Drupal knowledge, Drupal understanding for non-developers. Um, my name is Kelly Oxier, um, and let's get started. So today, the agenda really is going to walk through what do I mean um, when I say Drupal knowledge, Drupal understanding for non-developers. Then we'll really talk through the why. Like, why is this really important? How have we seen this impact our team positively um, across our projects and our relationships? And then a little bit on how. How do we move forward? Um, how do we start to build that knowledge across all of our team members? Uh, so, um, who am I? Um, in case you don't know what I look like, there's a picture of me. <laughs> Realizing now, this is the first time I've done this presentation. <laughs> Uh, right. <laughs> um, currently, I am a digital project manager at Time Seven. Um, we have a table down in the hallway. If you want to stop, say hi. Um, I don't think it has anything on it, but someone will sit there. Um, and I'm happy to talk with you guys. We have some awesome team members here as well um, to chat with you the next couple days. Um, but before I started working at 10.7, which was just a couple years ago, I worked at the university. I worked roles from accounts processor all the way to uh, digital communication specialist. So today and this, these next two days are really kind of a homecoming for me. It's exciting to be back on campus um, and seeing some familiar faces. So. Um, so yeah, so I've kind of grown my role um, from project manager to learn more about web uh, development and now I'm at 10.7. So what do I mean when I say Drupal for non-developers? Um, this talk is not going to be about learning how to code or how to actually configure anything in Drupal. Totally understand if anyone wants to shut their laptop right now and head out and say, what the heck? I thought I would have a quick 101 on how to make a Drupal site. What this talk is really about is why Drupal knowledge and a Drupal understanding for everyone across your team is super important and has brought a lot of value um, to the work we do and I think the work that you guys will do as well. So let's dig into the why. That's really the meat of the presentation. Uh, why is a Drupal knowledge and experience for non-developers important? The first pillar is advocacy, and that really comes from my role as a project manager. Our project managers on our team, myself being one of them, feels very confident leading conversations with clients, as well as internal teams, to be able to bridge that communication gap and really speak confidently and knowledgeably about Drupal. We've seen this play out um, in conversations where clients come to us asking us for support or um, need to fix, a, fix something, and we can provide solutions and kind of outline next steps right there in that conversation. Um, we can provide context around why decisions are being made, um, why we're proposing creating a new view to show your recent events versus a different option. Um, we can build a strong case for Drupal. We're really the front line where we can advocate for Drupal as a platform <coughs> and really explain the value and the, like the, um, what Drupal can bring to a website. And then we, again, kind of leading to the first line, we're at that first level of triage. So if a client comes to us saying, I really just need this tag on our blog to say this, or I need it capitalized versus lowercase. You can say, you know, you can go in there, find the taxonomy terms, and make that edit yourself. And that really empowers your clients to make those edits in the future and really makes them feel a part of the site and a part of the team. Um, so our other project manager provided this quote for me. Um, a knowledge of Drupal allows her to better translate the technical details of any given task into terms our clients may better understand. So we're really those translators. And so learning that language, which kind of makes me laugh because I was never great at languages, but learning that Drupal language and being able to bridge that gap between the development team and then translating it to your clients is an extremely important skill. And that comes with a good understanding, a deep understanding of Drupal. The other pillar that I've identified is just growth. Um, we have team members who 
aren't developers, um, don't really traditionally touch Drupal websites in any capacity, but they may have an interest in learning more and joining that conversation. So we've been able to um, bring team members into the fold and allow them to professionally develop while the company ourselves can confidently expand our services. So it's a win-win, win, I think, because the client's also win um, in this situation as well. So team members can feel more connected to the rest of the team. They can also join that conversation. They start to learn that language a little bit better. And then they're confident in their capabilities as they're growing and, and kind of express interest and can learn in that direction. Um, and then we've grown our capabilities and services by training non-developers in more Drupal-specific knowledge. An example of this is we have a non-developer team member who can help with content-related work. So we can actually start telling, like selling that service to clients and saying, hey, we can help build pages for you. We can, um, we can build out those taxonomy term lists and, and we are there to help you and support you and also guide you. So we, have a, we expand our team and we expand our services that way. So a quote from our chief of staff slash also kind of jack of all trades because she does QA for us, she does accessibility reviews for us, is really for her having a strong knowledge of Drupal helps her feel more like a part of the team. She, um, even though her role isn't usually directed at dev focused uh, tasks, um, being able to keep up with and even weigh in on and ask about questions and ideas um, helps her feel more engaged on a day to day basis. I'd say it does a lot more for her than that, but that was what she gave me, which is great. And then the third pillar is alignment. So really, a lot, having our non-developer functions, so everything from sales to um, user experience and design to development are all kind of communicating in that same language again, allowing them to feel confident in the products that they're creating and handing to the de development team to ultimately build for the site. So our growth team feels more confident in the proposals and the contracts that are shared with them because they have this knowledge and can understand what the scope is really looking to, to accomplish and can talk confidently to clients about that. Our designs are built with specific details that our development team needs. So there, there's no back and forth once the designs get to the development team about what needs to actually get accomplished. The designs are created with that development need in mind. And then our user experience team can provide stronger strategic guidance. So again, having that Drupal knowledge right off the bat allows them to really go into conversations with active action items that can be done immediately after a decision is made. So a quote from our director of UX is what we're really trying to do is increase the over, or trying to do is increase the overlap between content and design, design and development, therefore sealing the cracks that can lead to scope creep and work duplication. So I really love this quote because I think that idea of sealing the cracks, of really making sure that we are all kind of overlapping and talking that same language can really lead to a successful project um, in every sense of the word. Um, and, and happy clients, happy team members, it's just positive overall. So what all of these pillars really lead to is confidence. So team members can be confident in the work that they're doing, the conversations they're having, the, um, the growth that they're, the, the, what they're doing in their role and the growth and the trajectory of their position. Um, are, the company can feel confident that the team members are speaking that same language, are really on the same page. Uh, and then the client is confident because we are we are all coming to them with that same language, with that same recommendations, um, and speaking that same language. So there's not confusion there. It's one it's one team together. And I say that's a big high five. So what's the solution? How do we get everyone to know exactly everything about Drupal, and we can all talk the same language, and we can all get on the same page? Unfortunately, there is no one right answer. Um, I don't have any, like, you need this tool. I don't have anything that I'm going to sell to you guys. It's like, here's my, here's my talk that um, will get everyone on the same page, and then you're good to go. Um, but what has worked for us is starting 
starting with recruiting, and when we try to bring in team members, ask them, do you have a knowledge of Drupal? And if not, are you willing to learn that? And I think that'll be a really critical part of bringing in team members who are willing to learn, willing to start talking that language, um, and, and joining the group. The other is fostering an environment of learning. So really finding Drupal training resources and also allowing time, allowing time for people to sit and absorb that and take notes um, and giving them the opportunities to learn. And then also encouraging your team to share what they know and to demonstrate what they know. So on a, on a regular basis, our team walks through a recent project that we just completed and we talk through what the challenges are, what the successes were, what the goals were, and really continue to try to share that knowledge and grow together as a team. I do have some tools and resources. Some are not going to be shocking to you guys. Um, I'd say um, uh, towards the bottom I've got some links to some resources that have been helpful for our team members, but I personally think that the most powerful and the most impactful resources that you can start creating yourself is team generated content. So internal recordings and presentations, having an hour set aside a month even to just do a demonstration of like what is a view versus a paragraph type versus a taxonomy term and I know none of those are related. Um, I promise I know a little bit more Drupal than that but <laughs> Um, having a topic, having a theme, and just walking through it, even if it feels like the most basic thing, especially to the development team, it might be something new to someone on your team. And it could also be a resource that you share with your clients later on as you hand off the stewardship of your site to your clients and give them this resource that they can use to feel confident that they can manage the site as well. Um, we also have a robust uh, database of site doc, site and process documentation. That's another place where it's very helpful um, for team members to just go and we document everything from how an update goes on a particular site for a particular client, um, all the way to the process of how do we get a project set up in our Notion system. So um, there's, there's documentation across the board, but that's definitely a great resource to start curating and collecting as a team. The external resources, like I mentioned, are probably nothing new to you guys. Drupal.org, Drupal Drupalize.me um, are huge resources. All of the team members that I asked for this presentation uh, mentioned these two as great resources uh, to start learning and training. Uh, Weissman's Drupal test traits, um, introducing Drupal test traits, and smart web developer, web developer techniques, um, all resources that were called out as very helpful. Um, sources. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, if you need me to kind of reiterate. I see, I'm, I'll keep this slide up for a quick photo. <laughs> um, and then another set of slides, which may not be directly related to Drupal, but has helped our team, especially in accessibility and quality assurance reviews, um, to just kind of understand the language of the development team a little bit better and feel more confident in the work that she's doing. <laughs> Love the picture. <laughs> um, so really, in conclusion, and I was hoping I wasn't going to fly through this, but I kind of did, but that would be great. We'll have more questions and chatting. Um, expanding Drupal knowledge and experience across all team members fosters confidence. Um, really, that is the key phrase, is that your team members will all feel confident, they will all be able to join that conversation, and the work and the outcomes and the relationships will all benefit from that. Um, creating an environment of learning by providing opportunities for team members to expand their understanding through either independent learning from some of those external resources we mentioned or others. I would love to hear if there's other recommendations out there. Um, or knowledge sharing across functions is really going to benefit your team as a whole and get everyone on that same web page. So thank you. Again, I'm sorry, I knew I flew through this and I was hoping I wouldn't go so fast, um, but it just, um, 
I'm sending a personal shout out to everyone who taught me Drupal. Like I said, I have an art history degree. I started as an account processor and I've grown and pretty much have been that person who bugs you about like, how do you do this so then I don't have to bug you again? So a lot of that is, is your team members wanting to learn and ask as well. So sending a personal shout out to everyone who I've bugged and bothered throughout my life to get to this place where I'm feeling confident about joining that Drupal conversation. So again, I would love to open it up for questions. Um, again, if there's any other resources that people have used that I would love to recommend to the group, that would be great. Um, I'm here the next two days, and then my email address is totally open if you guys want to follow up or have any questions. But, yeah. Um, so I, I started working with Drupal about four or five years ago sure. as a total non-developer. Uh -huh. Now I'm a pretty good site builder. Nice. But I want to know how did you learn? I mean, and that was. It was hard. Every term was unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. If you look on Drupal.org, until you flipped over and over and tried to bang your head against it, you don't understand the language for a long time. Right. Right. So how did you do it? Yeah. So um, long story short, before I dive into like my whole past history, um, sadly, it was just creating dummy pages and just kind of breaking it or seeing how it worked, going back, trying to fix it. I'm pretty sure I completely shut down my center's website at some point. Unfortunately, at like four o'clock in the afternoon too, and I'm calling people, it's like the worst time. But um, that was one thought I had um, that I had a note on, I think, that I'm not, I'm not near my computer now. Um, I think it would be beneficial if your team or your unit set up a kind of a sandbox site that you would encourage everyone to go and build a, build a demo page. Maybe when you start a team, you are, you are expected to build your own bio page and that way you learn, I have to go to this content type, fill in these fields, what, like, and kind of get familiar with how it works. But it's really about trial and error and like digging in and not being afraid. Everything can be undone. Um, and just not being afraid to make a mistake. If it's on this website for five seconds, it's not the end of the world. I've had errors on there much longer than that. Um, so I know it's, probably, it's not a 100% solution, but I think just being okay making a mistake and trying to get your hands in there. Yeah, um, that's my experience too. Mm -hmm. It's like the contract is very complicated. It's like Bang away with it. Yeah. But I was just wondering, I was missing something. You're not missing anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. And like you said, you started with no knowledge at all, and, and now you're feeling pretty good about it. So, well, um, then you know how much you don't know. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do you approach like transmitting this knowledge to the client? Like you talk about content type or taxonomies or stuff like that. How do mm -hmm. you approach the you know, because they're coming from zero understanding. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So I think there's there's things that I'm confident I can talk the client through, like content types, taxonomy terms, um, to different types of views, and even how you can handle those behind the scenes. Um, I think so. I think kind of like piece by piece, right? So hey, like we need to talk about content types because we need to know which ones you need to set up and kind of explain to them what a content type is uh, and then kind of have next steps and kind of make decisions from there. Um, I think, again, that's where uh, recordings, video recordings are very useful because you can walk through how to make an edit to a taxonomy term, which shows them where it is. I mean, that's half the battle, right, is trying to figure out where everything is in Drupal. So having those recordings, sharing that with them, and kind of building that library, you can then kind of go into those with this mindset, like this isn't for one particular client, but we can then use this to share with, with anyone who has a question about that. Um, and then, I mean, and then also bring in more team members too to that conversation. So if I know ahead of time that we really have to dive into a maybe more complex block placement on pages and configuration, maybe I make sure I have a developer there so we can really bring in the team members we need to have that conversation, come out with a confident outcome for next steps. So it doesn't, it, 
I don't think any one person has to feel like they need to know it all. We don't know it all, that's why we are a team, so we just need to know when to bring in the other team members as well, um, and then um, to rely on each other. Yeah. Yeah. I have not. Um, I have not, but um, I know I have team members here. I don't want to put them on the spot, but um, I have team members here who have, and actually everyone who I I know I've spoken to to help me with this presentation mentioned Drupal Eyes Me as, as a really nice resource. And I, I understand, I know Drupal.org is very robust, but it is a language that can be a little bit complex um, right off the bat. So I think maybe the two of them together might help. Um, I personally, I've even had job interviews where I've been asked, like, how do you learn something if you don't know it? And, and I think now everyone says that I Google it, I YouTube it, um, walk through it, and even kind of pause and do do that activity on my own right next to it and kind of click through it. So there's definitely different ways to do it. But I think a big part of it is allowing yourself the time to do that. Yeah, and that's finding the time. question. Is, yeah. I've gotten subscriptions. But exactly. The time and and really, to get through it is hard. And so I think as, as supervisors, as managers, it's important to encourage your team members to do that. But if you're kind of more independently working, blocking Friday afternoon to do like to learn a little bit more about Drupal, it's kind of a great way to like wrap up your week and kind of head into the weekend. So I think that's a part of it too, is really giving you that focused time to learn it. Is important. Yeah. How do you balance? Um, giving team members um, enough knowledge that they can um, kind of interact and, and, and be part of the whole kind of ecosystem, but also not overwhelm them with more information than they need or whatever want. Totally, totally. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's dependent on the team member, kind of what they're willing to learn and what their kind of original level of knowledge is and, and how much they can absorb. Um, I think it's a, a a slower process. You don't want to bring someone in and then say, okay, you need to literally know all of Drupal the first week you're here, and then start having client conversations. So a lot of it is absorbing, bringing in team members that will help that conversation and absorbing what they're saying so that maybe the next time you don't meet them, you can have that conversation with the client yourself. Um, and I think it's, it's gonna be on a personal basis, like what per people's like kind of level or kind of ceiling is for that knowledge. Um, and, and knowing, again, when to bring in a developer or another team member to really aid that conversation as well. So it's, it's tricky, it's, it's not a, I don't think it's a one person answer, uh, or like a all at one size fits all answer. Um, I think it's pretty more, it's more individual than that, but it's having conversations with your team members too and just asking, hey, like, do you want to learn a little bit more about this? How are things going? Do you feel like you understand? Like, could we, would you be open to sit, sitting down and talking with some team members? Um, it's all, it's, yeah, it's kind of about talking as a team too and having that communication as a team. Um, and I've certainly had conversations with clients where I'm like, I'm not quite sure, so I will have to confirm this with you, but I'm pretty sure we can do it this way, or here are some of your options. Um, so at least getting that, that ball rolling, but also relying on the development team and the rest of the team to kind of confirm that or really outline that for, for me at times. Bad and two oh great! Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll just share something that we've done at our. We're at a, a larger Minnesota state agency, and so we have one Drupal developer and another two members that aren't. And so we've developed a guide for our team, you know, with a lot of input from our, our developer um, for us as to how to do things. Sure. And we had a new team member join the team, and a lot of the stuff was a little outdated from when we first did our migration to Drupal, and so that they've been pointing out these things and then updating them. And then we have a separate guide for our, kind of our next level of Drupal, Drupal users. So we have multiple divisions, and there's kind of a lead person in each division, and then we have a guide for them to use. 
So we call that our Drupal user guide, and that's a lot less technical, mm -hmm. but it's, it still has a lot of stuff that I might need to go over review on how to do because I haven't done something in a while. Can we copy that? We're really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you, DNR? Yeah. That's, right. that's awesome. Yeah, and it's I part of the stuff we plan on giving you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great way to bring someone into the fold, too, is say, hey, not say, you need to learn this, but hey, can you take a look at it and let us know, like, if things seem like they need to be updated or if you have any knowledge that can help make this more robust. So that's a helpful way to not not bring in someone who's very capable in the role that you hired them for to just say, hey, you don't know the conversation or you don't know the language yet. So that's awesome. That's yeah, great. so the new team member was coming from that user perspective mm -hmm. and then became a, a team member at the next level and then found a lot of this stuff didn't make sense because it was out of date. Sure, and sure. And then has been working to update that. I mean, and there's certainly times where I, I'm talking with my team and they're explaining to me like what the issue is and what needs to be done and I have to sit and kind of translate that, right, to the client and kind of make it a little bit more like in the terms that they know and I have many levels of clients that have different levels of knowledge. So it's a, it's a lot of translating, but the, I have literally written emails and then said, Hey, internal team, does this make, is this what, am I capturing this right? Like, that's what, like, we're all working together as a team, ultimately, which is helpful and, and great. Yeah? Uh, do you have a favorite project management like, service for building Drupal sites? We use Jira. We use Jira um, and a lot of the Atla Atlassian, Atlassian. Atlassian. <laughs> Uh, products. We also um, use Notion to capture like a lot of our. That's more the client facing, but also kind of capture um, a little bit more of our like documentation and kind of just like higher level project tracking. But as far as task tracking um, and updating and everything, we use Jira and Atlassian. And it's easy enough to adapt. That was something I wasn't using um, at the university at all, so it was it was simple enough to to learn. So I don't know if I've got this quite right since you're at an agency now, but you talked about client documentation. Mm -hmm. And so do you have a template and you know, what level do you write that? You know, what kind of things do you document for clients who have to maintain the site? Yeah, it's a great question. And actually, I don't think we, like, at the moment have just, like, a library we can hand off to them. It's pretty more, it's much more customized to kind of what their needs are and what the uh, site, the site is doing for them. So. Um, again, we use Notion to really create pages that are customized to the like the needs and the guidance that they need in particular. But it's, I mean, it's not, it's a great idea to kind of continue to bring in these recordings of kind of general site maintenance into a library that you can share with all clients, so. Um, you, you can touch on Loom. Yes, we do. We use Loom to do a lot of our screen recordings um, and we, and we so then we can just share that link uh, to any of our clients or add that to the Notion database so that it's there for them whenever they need to reference it. But that's, I, I think, I think screen recording is really kind of advanced and helped us in the ability to not just have a single conversation and then continue to ask again, what, how did we do that again? I totally don't remember. You record it once and they have that for reference and then they can share it with whoever you want, and I think that's that's a huge resource that um, can be leveraged for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. How often do you have to go back and delete old stuff in your documentation or your old videos or adjust things with new versions coming out? It's a great question. So far, I haven't had to delete anything yet. Um, I am not. I'm a use or hiding things so things look organized but all of it's still there um, under the hood so um, that's we haven't I, we haven't really done a big like curation of our documents and deleted a lot of stuff um, I think me personally I think the more that you can share with the client and it's, it's there for them whenever they need to go back but we keep things organized for the more like present pertinent deep information um, is helpful and just kind of open and honest about everything that we have and we created for them. Yeah. Um, do you build a workflow process for content and development and who are the people that you include? 
on yeah. the building that works for. for like for just like a site rebuild or like a redesign or just kind of right. yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so when we embark on a site redesign uh, we use Jira to create those epics and add those tasks below that we usually work internally as a team to kind of build that that strategy but then walk the client through it we bring them into the uh, weekly conversations um, when we do spread planning and just keep make sure that they are um, up to date and aware and help make priority decisions when needed uh, throughout that process so it's a, it's really it's myself as project manager then our lead development uh, developer and our team as well as the client all in that conversation throughout that entire rebuild process and I, if you have any other questions, I can certainly talk more about that as well. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Awesome. I did it. <laughs> <laughs>